Hi, this is Frankie from About Script. In this video, we're going to be covering a request from a user for uh, from a guest user on the AutoHotKey forum for how to debug a script. Uh, this was posted in the request for tutorials uh, thread in the forum. Please visit that if you have any ideas or send me a message on YouTube. So we're going to get started and dive right in here. Uh, we've always used no, um, site for AutoHotKey to do AutoHotKey stuff. But uh, Notepad++ has an advantage when you're working on debugging. It has a little bit of better support, uh, which we hope to see in, in sight in future versions. But for now, we're going to stick with this. So we have two downloads for this. We have the Notepad++ installer. If you already have a recent version of Notepad++, you don't need to worry about this. You also need to download the DBGP, I believe the P stands for plugin, um, debugger. Uh, plugin for Notepad++. So you can go to j.mp slash ahk dbg1 and 2 to get these two uh, downloads. So once you download them, um, this comes in a zip file and inside that zip file there will be two files. Um, one of them is a DLL file which is the larger of the two and then one's just a md5 file which basically says did you get the right download or not. Um, but we're not going to worry about that too much right now. However, um, I appear to be having an issue here. There we go. If you go and you take that file and you find your Notepad++ folder, and then your Plugins folder, you'll see that you just drop it in there. Just copy and paste it from the zip file into here. Usually drag and drop works just fine. And then you'll be all set with that. Um, if you already have Notepad++ open, you need to close it and reopen it. And to make sure you're all set, it should be in the plugins menu right here. Okay. Um, you want to go into the config or configuration and make sure this is checked. And everything else is uh, fine at the defaults. Uh, this one's optional. We're going to leave it checked for now. It's, uh, it defaults to off, but it's break at first line when debugging starts, which basically means um, do you want to wait to find a breakpoint, or do you want to just just say the first line is a breakpoint? We can uncheck it if we want, and that just means we need to put a breakpoint on the first line. So now we need to set up one more thing, and that's our run dialog. So if you click um, run and then run, you get this dialog, and it'll probably be blank for you. This is where we need to build um, a debugging uh, command. So the way to do that is to click here and find your autohotkey.exe executable, which is like the in C program files for most people, and you click on that. And then you come and you take this string here, which I'll provide, and you copy and paste that at the end. Make sure it's at the end. You also want to quote um, the autohotkey.exe string, because you see these spaces here. It won't know that, these, that this is the same, and it'll group this as one command and the rest as something else. So we need to quote that, and then copy and paste this at the end. Now when we run that, it should work. You're going to want to hit save here, and you're going to want to give it a name, and possibly a hotkey if you like. I have mine set as control shift D for debug. Okay? So we're going to close that. I already have mine. And then it'll also show up in the menu here. Um, here's an example auto hotkey script that we'll be debugging with. So you can see some basic things in the script. Um, we have an array, we have a number, and we're going to have another random number. So if we want, we can go to the first line here. We need to go to our plugins and choose the debugger option, which opens this down here. Um, and I have these watches set up. You won't have these, so we'll delete them to start with. And what we're going to do now, everything's all set, debugging is turned on, and we're going to do run, and run that. Um, oh, we need to remember to set a breakpoint. There we go. This red button sets a breakpoint, and if you want to later turn that off, you just hit it again on that line. So now we're going to run it again, and you see now we've connected to this. It's no longer said it's disconnected, now it has that there. And you can see there's an arrow on the first line. 
So now we can add some watches. Watches are the name of variables that you want to check. So we have three variables that we'll be using in the script. Foo, bar, and boz. Now they all show up as undefined, but that'll quickly change. We have three uh, main commands we'll be using here. Step into, which means if there's a function call on the line you're on, it'll go into that function definition, wherever that may be, in whatever file it may be in. And it'll start, um, it'll show you, and you can step through that. It's very useful for going in depth into um, debugging. Step over just means go to the next line. And step out means if you're in a function, just execute the rest of the function and then pop out to wherever the function was called from. So since we don't have any depth to this, we're just going to be doing step overs. So we step over. And now you notice that foo changed from undefined to an object. If we click this plus arrow here, we're able to examine the object, seeing the keys and the values and the types of each value. If we had more values and more objects inside that, we'd be able to go and break it down more and more and more and see every uh, depth of that object. We're going to step over again, and you see now we have our bar value because it's been assigned and it's an integer. So that's pretty simple. You could just look at the script and figure out what that would do. But now we're going to go over and now we've gone past this random line. So now we have boz here, and that has a value of 107. So if you're wondering why your script isn't working maybe sometimes, and there's something that happens that's, that's variable, like a random call or interacting with something else, you can put a breakpoint right after that and see what the actual value of it is as your script's running. A lot of times what... um. What someone might do if they're not using a debugger is they might have a line here and type like message box and then have the value of boz pop up. But then when you have that going constantly in your scripts, it can slow things down a lot and make it very difficult to interact with. This way, if we were to have a bunch of more code here and then something that ended up using boz down here um, for, for whatever reason, we'd still be able to see it. We could set more breakpoints, and we could see how a value changes of a variable throughout the script. It's very useful for a variety of situations. And um, this is what debugging is. You're allowed to step through it, step by step, at any rate you so choose, and get your results. So um, it's a great way to inspect things like objects, which otherwise you can't even show an object in a message box. Um, it'll just show up as blank. So you can inspect things and see how they're working and what's maybe going wrong with your script. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.